So um, in the last two weeks, we've covered the first uh, six sections of chapter five, which is uh, the longest chapter in the textbook, I think. And um, so we covered introduction of special relativity and Lorentz transformation and application of Lorentz transformation. And what we are going to be spending this week are uh, relativistic dynamics. And uh, technically, I guess the Doppler effect could have been covered the last week. Um, but in the lecture, there's a particular way I'd like to cover Doppler effect. So, um, so, um, so we are covering Doppler effect as part of this week. And I think the comparison between how your textbook derives the Doppler effect and talks about it and how you see it covered in the lecture, it'll be useful to see because in the lecture, I derive these formulas not through the consideration that you see in your textbook, but rather um, by treating the wave number or the four wave vector as a four vector that obeys uh, the Lorentz transformation. And I think it's a much more elegant way to look at Doppler effect. So you will see that it reflected in the lecture. And the end result is that we do commit the same formula. And th this uh, expression, I guess what I do derive in the lecture technically is the formula for frequency. So, so we, are, we get at the same um, end point. The difference is how you get there. And the methods we employ more properly put the Doppler effect at the end of the chapter. Um, so, um, but it, it's all in the same way. So you'll see some questions about Doppler effect. The bulk of uh, what we cover this week are relativistic momentum and energy. Uh, or what we might call relativistic dynamics, especially if you are looking at things that are interacting. Now, um, your textbook introduces relativistic momentum rather simply, and I, I think it's uh, appropriate. It um, simply tells you that uh, it can be shown <laughs> that the momentum calculated as merely this quantity is Oh, wait, wait, that's not it. Um, it says the correct equation for momentum can be shown instead to be the classical expression in terms of the increment of the, the proper time. And I think for lower division textbook, this is enough. Um, you, so momentum, instead of being mass times velocity, it's this uh, weird quantity that is related to velocity, but it's not quite the velocity, but it'll be similar to velocity if uh, if uh, you are using low speed approximation. And the end result is actually quite simple. Um, what this uh, modification amounts to is an uh, additional factor gamma that we didn't know this before. Um, up until now, we've been using momentum is equal to mass times velocity. And what this relativistic treatment is telling you is that there's this factor gamma, which is very close to one when your speed is much less than speed of light. So I, I think this is sufficient. And in fact, the most important thing to know is that formula, P is equal to gamma mv. <laughs> now I did um, find, thought it was philosophically a bit uh, lacking in that Special relativity is a paradigm shifting change to our understanding of uh, space time and mechanics. So it really undermines a lot of the formulas we have taken for granted. So, um, so I'll do a separate lecture where we drive a new expression for momentum in a more, I think, logically uh, grounded way. So we'll do that. But um, as far as what you need to know, this is sufficient. P is equal to gamma mv. That, in fact, uh, this is one of the things that I often say is the result is much simpler than the derivation. So what I want you to first to focus on is knowing the answer and uh, justifying that this is the correct answer uh, I will demonstrate how to justify it, but it's not as useful or important, at least not in lower division level. So relativistic momentum is where you have to start out with. And one interesting outcome of that expression for relativistic momentum is even though speed has an upper limit, you can never go faster than speed of light C, 
momentum does not have an upper limit. As an object with mass approaches C, momentum can increase without limit. It's, uh, um, I guess you can look at it a um, couple different ways. You can look at it as kind of a natural intuitive thing that there shouldn't really be an upper limit to the amount of momentum, one. Two, or you can flip it around and say, this is why uh, speed of anything, anything that has mass can never exactly equal or be greater than C because it would take infinite amount of momentum transfer. So, so that's a, uh, um, um, so that's the relativistic momentum. Now, there's one thing that's worth noting, especially if you're reading uh, Feynman lectures on physics, <laughs> where he does use this particular concept. Um, so, so I'll guess I'll just use read this whole text sentence. Uh, the relativistically correct definition of momentum as p equals gamma mv is sometimes taken to imply that mass varies with the velocity that the variable or relativistic mass is equal to gamma m, particularly in older textbooks. Feynman <laughs> lectures on physics being one of them. And um, I just want to say this uh, idea of relativistic mass often leads to confusion and um, it sometimes appears to imply things it doesn't actually imply. So, um, so, so, I just want you to know that the, the idea and the phrase relativistic mass is the uncommon use. And most of the time when people say mass, they do mean just the rest of mass or what you've known as mass the whole time. And uh, I do have a separate lecture videos where I say uh, mass should mean the same as rest mass or the invariant mass that uh, we introduce in the context of four momentum. So, um, so do watch out for that, especially when you read older textbooks that sometimes authors will refer to relativistic mass and uh, they, they do have their reason for bringing it up, but um, that it's, a, it's an, an outdated use that uh, if you look at more recent upper division and graduate level textbooks, um, authors will stay away from the idea of relativistic mass. Um, the biggest reason for staying away actually is the, the next thing, relativistic energy. And uh, I addressed that in the lecture, so maybe I shouldn't spend too much time talking about relationship between relativistic mass and relativistic energy. So relativistic energy is the modification to our ideas of mechanical energy, especially kinetic energy, similar to the modification we just uh, the textbook just made for momentum. So, um, so it, this is the thing about special relativity being a paradigm shifting development. Basically all the formulas that you already knew, they all have to be either checked that they are relativistically correct. That is the case for uh, formulas for electromagnetism. And if they are not relativistically correct, then we have to redrive the relativistically correct version. So um, the derivation of uh, relativistic energy, it relies on the um, new definition of relativistic momentum and using the new definition of relativistic momentum to re-express the force and rework out the expression for work and relating that to kinetic energy. And it is quite involved the derivation. So your textbook does it this way. I guess this is a bit more um, rigorous than how I do in the lecture. So I think there's a way to justify going from dx to dx dt dt. Uh, there's probably some calculus theorem they can invoke. Um, I don't do that. I just uh, abuse notation to change a variable to the one I want and then specify the limits to the one it should be. <laughs> so your textbook goes through derivations. If you can follow it, if you can follow it, great. Um, if not, see if you can follow the lecture derivation. Um, in the end, the result is rather simple. The result for relativistic kinetic energy is just this. It's actually more simpler looking than the 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 classical or low speed uh, kinetic energy. It's uh, mc squared times this factor gamma minus one, and 
In fact, this arrangement of terms um, invites you to think of there being something other than kinetic energy. And your textbook should go through that to introduce the idea of rest energy down here, total relativistic energy. And this mc squared is the rest energy. And this is where you see the expression for the total energy, E is equal to gamma mc squared. And this is where you begin to see that there isn't really a distinction between what you might call relativistic mass and what you might call, or what you should call relativistic energy. The only difference between them is the factor C squared. And if you are already using C is equal to one unit system, then relativistic mass is relativistic energy. So the that concept of relativistic mass doesn't really add anything there. That isn't already present in the idea of total energy. Um, yeah, and this is the rest energy where gamma is equal to one. So, so that's uh, where your textbook uh, ends up or leads, uh, leaves off. And I felt they um, left a number of application of relativistic energy and momentum because it's uh, um, the idea of energy and momentum just uh, standing on its own. It's, um, you know, it's introduced to, for a problem-solving purpose, at least in physics 4A it was. The idea of energy conservation and momentum conservation allowed you to solve the types of questions that were too complicated to tackle directly using Newton's laws and other um, direct force analysis tools. And um, and I feel if we simply leave off here, it, we are not, <laughs> we are leaving the topic half covered. So, so that's why we'll also spend additional time looking at interactions that we can analyze using the idea of energy and momentum conservation. And those interactions collectively can be uh, referred to as collisions. So you will see a significant number of collision questions this week. Um, and because this uh, does require uh, problem solving approaches and some ideas that your uh, textbook doesn't introduce, they are covered in the lecture. So please do look at the lecture. And um, if you somehow prefer the written form, uh, this note does uh, reproduce uh, many of what is lectured on in the written form. So in terms of relating the lecture to the textbook, um, where we kind of end off at is somewhere here. And the starting with the example of the inelastic collision, introduction of four momentum, which will help analyze the certain types of collisions <laughs> and, um, and Doppler effect. Again, it's a one-off thing that uh, I'm covering the basically the same thing that the textbook does from a different angle. And, and this is the part that um, covers really what your textbook leaves off. So I would uh, just encourage you to make sure you have enough time this week to look at this and give yourself enough time to uh, attempt to the, the homework questions because uh, we do have a fairly long set this week and of the long set, only about half the questions are from the chapter end and the other half are the questions that they are the other half are standard type of collision questions that I wrote uh, that your textbook should have included but didn't include. So, um, so that's a chapter five overview, part three, more or less. Um, so this is our last uh, week in special relativity, but not the last week that you will see special relativity. Uh, you will see uh, some of the special relativity things being explicitly mentioned. Um, in fact, even, I guess not quite next week, but the week after maybe, or maybe, okay, next week, the Compton effect. Um, Compton's, in order to drive the correct Compton scattering formula, you have to use relativistic energy momentum relationship. So you will see relativity brought back in next week. And uh, later in the semester, when we do particle physics, um, really though, if there's one field that uh, 
most closely tied with special relativity it's particle physics because uh, there are so many much aspects of interactions in particle accelerators that um, involve particles moving close to speed of light so uh, without relativity you get re wrong results or you predict wrong results so when we get to particle physics you will also see relativity brought back in so and maybe even nuclear physics uh, when it con comes to nuclear radioactive decay. So this is the last week we are covering relativity explicitly, but uh, not the last week you will see relativity. <laughs>